Okay, please. Uh, my slides showing. Uh, my slides showing. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, so today we're looking at business ethics and consumers. It's the same as consumers and companies. We want to find out what are the ethical issues between consumers and companies, or you can say consumers and suppliers. Okay, now, first thing is that, um, so who are consumers? You and I are consumers. We buy water to drink, and we go to restaurant to do a number of things. So we consumers everywhere. Point number two is that consumers are they stakeholders? The answer is yes. The reasons are that if companies do not produce, man, we're going to starve to death. Then they have to produce for somebody will have to sell gas. Somebody will have to sell food, yam, cake. Otherwise, we will starve, and in no time we will die. So whatever people sell around, we have stick in them. Okay. Therefore, whether it's a water company, whether it's a fuel company, man, we have stick in them. Now, so what have I said? Who are consumers? Number one, two. What and what are the sticks? And then we go on to three. So very, very good. The third one has to do with the various ethical issues between consumers and uh, between consumers and the companies. Number one of that is called the right to save an efficacious product. And I will explain what it means is that everybody who buys has the right to make to 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 make sure that the the thing that they are buying is safe and is secure, and it's not going to harm them in any way. It's consumers' right. So whenever this safety and efficacy they are absent. We can go to court and press something charges against the firm. Now, two things are happening here: efficacy and safety. Safety means that you will not be harmed. So the color, the packaging, or everything is intact. Efficacy means that the purpose for which the product was manufactured it was first. For example, if you buy BMW or you buy Toyota, and the assumption is that Toyota cars are roadworthy, especially when you come to third-world countries. When we say efficacy, efficacy means that the car must give you the same purpose. If it fails to do that, it means that you have lost on the grounds of efficacy. That's the first thing everybody will have to know. Then, uh, so look. Um, so yeah. So you let's go on. Okay. Fine. Now, so after I have said every consumer has right to efficacy, the next thing is that what does efficacy and safety mean in business ethics, and this area is crucial and important, you will have to say in business ethics, when they mention efficacy and safety, it's talking about situation where the producer, the manufacturer, the seller has demonstrated due care. When we say due care, it means that uh, I mean, whatever you need to do, packaging, labeling, inscription, you've done the best. That is what we call due care. Now, um, people said that, but 
I mean, how will we be able to ensure or ascertain that this is what the producer, the supplier has to do and therefore has done? How? Okay. And then they said, because of that, if you find it difficult to understand due care, move on and talk about negligence. Moved on and talk about negligence. Okay. And then there was also another challenge that, fine, if you say due care is complicated, people don't really know what is in, what is not in. And then you say, okay, in the absence of that, talk about due care. There, there's also the challenge, what constitute due care? So eventually the conclusion is that consumers will be able to establish that there is a form of due care or there is an absence of negligence when one or more or all of what is on the screen are present. Because it's, it will be very difficult for you to really go down there and pinpoint due care or negligence. So eventually where consumer right to save an efficacy product are assured we are assuming that whatever the person bought has warranties. Two, whatever the person bought has certifications. Three, whatever the person bought has reliable measurement. Four, whatever the person bought has product manual, and so on and so forth. So business ethics is trying to say, when these things are not there, we can test out and argue that the company has failed when it comes to uh, right to safe and efficacious that. That is number one. So in the exam, when I asked you, what is the ethical problem that you still say? The ethical problem is that it's difficult to define uh, due care. It's difficult to define negligence. And therefore, in practice, when these things are not there, we can condemn the firm as being on ethical, being on ethical. Okay, now let's go to number two. Okay, so this is number two. Number two says deceptive ad advertising personal selling, sales promotion, and public relations. Okay, so we are going to look at in selling, in advertising, in sales promotion, in public relations, what are the deception in them, which can be termed as on ethical. And what it's trying to say here is that we, if we don't check that one, it's not the best because it has bad implications on individuals, okay, in the society, okay? Um, so we will go ahead and say, look, uh, what is deception? It means that deliberately we're trying to create false impression to hoodwink. Hoodwink means that we are taking advantage of some somebody. So you let's go gradually, gradually, gradually. All right, again, is a deception involved taking advantage of a belief that is untrue. Third one, it includes overly unrealistic product. That means that somebody is selling a product or a service, and the person is claiming that it's gonna do Y, it's gonna do B, it's gonna do C, and so on and so forth man it becomes doubtful okay then so it's a when advertising personal selling sales promotion substantially interfere with ability to, of people to make rational consumer choices okay now look at these examples it says that a, a firm advertises certain things and what they're trying to say is that um their products are recyclable you see it on their billboards. Uh, I mean, whenever they're 
making any communication in the TV. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to ask you, you know, what is unethical about that? Second one is trying to say some company may sell some product, a drinking product, sweet beverage. And then they're trying to say that immediately you drink that beverage, you're going to be royal, you're going to be majestic. So the question is that uh, these two examples, in what way do you think they may constitute on ethical practice? Can anybody share their thought? If anybody says, oh, our product, man, they are recyclable. In other words, for us as a firm, we, we do not litter at all. Whatever uh, product we create, we make sure that we recycle everything. And, and then some people are also saying, we're selling certain beverage. Immediately you drink, man, you're a royal person. And then they're asking you, are uh, there deception about this? The answer is yes. So who can tell us the deceptions inherent in these examples? Anybody can share with us? Okay, I'm going to do it for you. So first one says that there's a claim that a product is recyclable and it's environmental friendly. So in Ghana, if a firm claims that, but we don't see beans of these firms across Accra, across Kumasi, across the region, across the mall, we can, we can tell them that they are creating deception. Immediately you say that whatever you offer is recyclable, it means you must produce beans everywhere in the country. Or even if not everywhere, key places like the most universities, so that people will not later. Immediately they're done with some stuff, you're gonna put it in the bin. And so claiming, making noise about, oh, you are ethical business, everything of yours is recyclable and people buy your things and we cannot identify with your dustbin, refuse disposal bin, man, you're creating falsehood and deception. The second one says that if you drink a particular beverage, you're going to be majestic. The question is in life, do you think that drinking a particular beverage can change your genes from ordinary person to become a royal person? The answer is no. So what we are trying to say is that the law didn't give firms the choice of words to use. That aspect is great. Nobody talk about that. So in the process of the companies coming out with their own ways to advertise their product, they are going overboard and telling people things that are untrue Nobody drinks a particular beverage on X and become a royal. Royal is natural from God. Okay? So when we see that, it's deception. All right. And then there's a lot of things here. You see that um, also sometimes uh, companies that advertise, can, they create artificial warm people buy things that they don't really need. Can you imagine? And then look who, so look at the way they communicate about it. Uh, it makes society to associate standard of living to consumption of tangible materials like war, car, specific phones, houses. So they try to say, if you don't drive a particular car, if you don't use a particular phone, if you don't live in a particular house, man, you're not respected. But business editors is trying to see people can drive nice cars and they're going through stress. So absence of stress does not necessarily mean you're driving a nice car. If you have family, you have a church, you go. I mean, I'm a pastor for, for you to know in, in, in Accra, Ghana here. And there's a lot of people who come to my church and they feel complete and stable because of the kind of things we do. Um, so look, they say people cannot, people might not go to beer bar, buy beer to drink. But they may consume organic stuff, which is not expensive. All right. And they're not afraid of anything. 
So the fact that somebody does not use a car type, this, that one, does not be not considered important. Okay, let's go to point number three. So point one is right to freedom from what? Uh, uh, what a right to efficacy and then um, uh, safe product. Second one is uh, talking about deception in personal selling, promotion, and then public relation. They are all marketing things. Number three, in another area that produces um, suppliers can take consumers for granted is pricing. And we have four types of pricing. Excessive pricing, predatory pricing, deceptive pricing, and then price fixing. Let's come back. Okay, so what do we mean by deceptive pricing? Deceptive pricing. Okay, so it says, look, I will give example. Even though currently in Ghana, you look and see if prices of goods and services have gone up. But that doesn't mean that people should price things so much. So um, the surprise, excessive price happens when the price of an item, we cannot justify it by the cost of the materials used. So yes, you went to Kumasi to bring plantain into Accra, you bought a car and all that, but that doesn't mean one plantain sticks is going for say 200 Ghana. There we can say this is excessive. The reason that the cost you incur in bringing that plantain to Accra cannot match up in any way. Yes, yes, you have to put your profit margin on it. Still, is too much. That's what we refer to as. Um, excessive pricing. Simply, we can't justify with the cost of production. The second one is called predatory pricing. Predatory pricing means, look, you can deliberately reduce the price of an item and everybody will come and buy your own. Immediately they come and buy, after six months, you increase the price. We call that one predatory price is falsehood. So, for example, if let's say your school fees, I'm not sure. Please, if it happens, forgive me. I'm not lambasting anybody. Or let's even use my university. If let's say you came to my university and they told you that two year program, you're paying 5,000 Ghana for semester one, but it will be increased when you go to semester two. And then a lot of people in town, they are charging maybe um, 15,000, 20,000 for the program. And you say, oh man, this is too expensive. Therefore, the uni that is trying to say, you pay 5,000 and we see how it goes. You forget about others and then uh, attend this school. And immediately the next year came, this school came and said, no from 5,000, the price is re revised or improved or increased to say 16,000. So what do you do? You're already in the middle, you can't leave. And companies do that. Companies do that, okay? So anybody that does that, we will say they are doing excessive pricing, sorry, predatory pricing. Deliberately, they will reduce the price. One people come in, then they raise it. Now you are in the middle. You haven't finished school. They say they what increase the school fees. So should you stop? If you stop, it's against you. They've taken your money. The best you could do is go and look for loan. Come and pay off and finish. But it's a, it's very deceptive pricing. They never told you the truth. They were hiding certain things. Okay, then. Um, so we have excessive pricing, predatory. Third one is deceptive pricing, and look. Here, the explanation is two. Um, the first one is that when the value of what you're selling is not true. So, for example, uh, maybe we, we go to Mercom. They've reduced a the number of things and people 
people are just rising and flocking in there. Immediately they went and bought and they took the item to the house. The next day, now everything broke. So, oh, really? This was decorated and we saw that it was good, not knowing that we call that one the safety. So, it means that the true value of the product or the item was not shown. That's number one. The second one is that if you go to Mecca and they say they are doing sales, discount, come, 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 everybody. Immediately you entered, you saw that the discount does not apply to plenty things, only a few things. Meanwhile, on the billboard in public, they didn't say that the discount or the sales are going for some, they say sales. Anywhere you go, they do that. you can charge deception against them. Okay? Charge the deception. The last one, see that a group of firms can come together to form a cartel. And then they will increase a service and then you'll be frustrated because you have nobody to tend to. We call that one price fixing for collusion. Maybe all universities in Ghana will be one. Then they will say, if you don't pay 50,000, you can't do masters. So where are you going? You can't go to Wisconsin. You can't go to Methodist. So we said, when companies do that, it is unethical. So that is all about three of them. First one, right to save efficacy product. Uh, second one is uh, deception, personal selling, advertising, public relation. Third one is about pricing, for pricing. That can constitute deception. One is excessive pricing, predatory uh, deception. Sorry, first one is excessive, second predatory, third one is a deceptive, and the fourth one is collusion among sellers. Fourth one is known as marketing strategy. Marketing strategy. What is unethical about this? The unethical practices about marketing strategy is that the whole Ghana. A company will use one strategy to advertise or communicate their product to us. Whenever the methodology or the approach is one, we say this is unethical. Why? Because people in Accra, they read, they, they speak good English, they write good English compared to those in the village. Meanwhile, the inscription on Coca-Cola in Accra is the same thing in the North. They say, meanwhile, in the north, so people don't even understand English. So, meanwhile, Coca Cola, Coke, please, no one bothers to even convert. Regardless of age, regardless of gender regardless of people's professional status, that one constitute unethical practices. Okay, that's all that you need to. The next one is consumer right to freedom from discrimination. What does this mean? This one says that eh, any company that comes to the world and create a class and serve them they are unethical. So, for example, in Accra, there's a neighborhood called Trasaku. If you don't have money, you cannot live there. So, business ethics is trying to say uh, the one who did that, all right, is really, really unethical because they are trying to segregate that unless you have a certain amount of money, you can't sleep in a nice place. So uh, an equal opportunity, um, what a uh, building construction company will be one that will build a circle type house, all right. But it will also come down to build simple, simple, simple one for everybody to afford. So they say, if you don't have a credit card, you cannot drive a car, it's on Ethica. They are creating segregation, discrimination in consumption. And that is unfair to society, so that's number five. And then number six is trying to say, 
situation where companies obtain data about their consumers and then they relay the data to third parties without their workers knowledge whenever it happens like that man it is known as um on ethical practice okay on ethical practice so we don't expect anybody to get okay camera yes sir i'll be kitchen okay yeah is it about just when uh, one company has decided just to fix a price so this price is just categorized for uh, one group of people so is there any discrimination there okay i don't know what I, if i heard you well are you talking about uh, so, sell, selling product to one people or yeah, selling, selling product yeah that's what we are talking about yes yeah it's, it's discrimination so the discrimination is not not legal but ethical discrimination you're not bad, you're, you're not being fair to society yeah okay yeah you're not being fair so if you say if you are not working you cannot get credit card to go and buy grocery and the more it is discriminatory once people are human being and you are a company operating you should be able to come down to everybody's level yes okay yes 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 all right uh, yeah i was thinking about just uh so when a company has decided just to fix a price of just one product so this price is just for only they, are, they have categorized just the, the people that for who they wanted just to sell the, the product so that i would like to know if that part is like a discrimination yeah, or yeah, it, is. it is yes all right okay and then um, the next one, okay, is talking about globalization and ethical challenge. All that is trying to say that we also have some companies from abroad, right, from China, Europe, and then they bring goods which are substandard drugs. If you go to Accra Central, say complicated drugs that people are selling in the scorching sun, they are 100% on ethical drugs that are not certified internationally. People are selling the crash center. And they are all brought in Ghana by what companies from abroad. And they're trying to say, because people are vulnerable, they don't have money. So if you say a pink killer is one Ghana city, a poor man will buy a pink killer, which is one Ghana city. So uh, that's all about what, what you're doing. Okay, so basically that is all about um, the rights of consumers that companies are likely to take for granted. And when we say consumers, it is you and I. So from today, watch all the advertisement you see to town, Shashi. Look at what they've written on them and find out is it real or is deception? Okay. Some school they say Royal Academy. So the question is, do you think education school can make somebody royal? No, it's not real. All those things are ethically problematic. And like I told you, the the inscription on Coca-Cola in Accra, in Volta region, in Eastern region, in Bronca Half is the same. What does that mean? Do you think somebody, everybody in Volta region or maybe Bronca Hafu can read the sugar content of Coca-Cola? No. Business ethics is saying this is bad. If nobody is saying, we will say it. If you go to the north, I'm told that a lot of people, they only understand their dialect. Meanwhile, a lot of drugs, they are sold in the north. So what will happen? It is not fair. Okay, that's all about this evening lecture. Let's see if anybody has any questions.